imagine going to jail at 14 and your mom is a cop and then you had three chances to literally be free and you still fucked it up going to jail at 14 you're going to miss out on a lot technology life crushes i mean you can't see your crush from jail i'm just kidding but like just imagine life actually just going to jail at such a freaking young age what did leonel tate do to deserve such a sentence this is the first sentence to have ever been delivered to the youngest person on the planet this case took place in pembroke of florida and it was in 1999 so what actually happened was that lionel's mom which is mrs tate her name is mawik and she was also a cop she was not performing any cop duties that particular day but she was just living her normal life as a mom she was cooking in the kitchen because her friend actually mrs unique asked her to watch her daughter tiffany for the night on to the next morning and she didn't see any problem with doing that because they were lifelong friends they moved to the u.s from jamaica and they've been living in the u.s ever since they grew together made money together and whatnot after she was done cooking she served tiffany and leonel their food and after they finished eating she got tired after watching tv with them for a while and she told them that she was going to go upstairs because she was tired and they should not make any noise so she went upstairs and she basically slept off at about 10 p.m kathleen actually heard some scruffles downstairs but she didn't really think much of it she just thought that probably the kids were playing or they were doing something like they normally do because sometimes they just usually make noise like that because you know they are kids not knowing that not checking up on this scruffle sound would be the worst regret of her entire life at around 10 40 while she was sleeping her son lionel came upstairs to tell her that tiffany wasn't breathing out of shock kathleen jumps out of bed and goes downstairs to see tiffany on the floor lifeless kathleen then asked her son lionel what happened and he explained that they were copying some wrestling moves from the tv and she just blacked out and wasn't breathing he told his mom that he had put Tiffany in a headlock and had put her on the ground. But by the time Tiffany wanted to get up, she hit her head on the table. And he just thought that it was a normal hitting your head, oh, mistake and whatever. Because he said he told her sorry and she just started crying. And after a while, she stopped crying and she just lay down on the floor and didn't talk or breathe again so by the time he went upstairs and came back down with his mom tiffany's body was as cold as ice what people don't really know is did he do this purposely investigators and other people medical practitioners think that he actually did this with evil intentions and that she actually had multiple bruises on her body a cracked skull liver kidney failures and punctures and how is this possible if you just body slammed her once according to the medical reports that were actually shown in this or for this case it was actually seen that she had been beaten for like probably about five minutes and it was seen that like her body bruises were like as if she was thrown from a three-story building investigators tried to do a back check on leonel and it was actually seen that he had been suspended from school about 15 times for violence stealing fighting with teachers fighting with his fellow students so at this point is his mom at fault for knowing that he, her child needed help and didn't get him the preferred help that he needs because why is your child being suspended from school 15 times and if you know that your son has that kind of rage in him why would you leave him downstairs with a girl that he is three times his body weight i don't even understand at this point and you are a cop because she was actually a cop in 2001 lionel went to court and he was the first person in the whole of entirety to have a life sentence as a child 
it broke the news everyone was talking about it and it was just very sad actually the most heartbreaking thing in that court case was the video that he reenacted on how he actually had mistakenly killed tiffany and Denise, that Tiffany's mother could not actually help but cry. It was also said that a psychiatrist called Padowitz that was in Lionel's case actually told him how to act in the video and so that it seemed like he had diminished capacity so that to reduce his life sentence or reduce however punishment he was going to have. But it's obvious that this did not actually work out. Lionel was also obsessed with wrestling and it was actually shown that in the 90s at that time there were a lot of people that were obsessed with wrestling because that was like pure entertainment for especially men it was very popular people always practiced it and it was also tried to use to defend leonel's case that he did not know the impact that actual wrestling performing these activities at home which they actually show on tv that you should not perform at home he did it and did not realize the consequences. So that was also tried to use to back up Leonel's case to hope that he doesn't get a life sentence. But according to another forensic psychologist that was on the side of Tiffany, obviously he said that he does not think and he is 100% sure that what Leonel reacted or reenacted in that video was not how Tiffany died because Tiffany had multiple bruises so it could not have been shown from one body slam or two body slams it was a continuous beating the video had actually shown and Leonel had actually also spoken to the court that what actually happened and also that was seen in the video was that he had hit her especially more than 30 times it was like 40 body hits slammed her on the ground to the extent that she was crying she went upstairs and threw up in the toilet and when she came back downstairs he had asked her if she wanted to play ropes if you do not know how to play ropes it's basically like what people used to play most times in the olden days so people still play it actually right now it's like the ropes of a wrestling match you go back and you come closer to the person that you're supposed to hit and then he kept on hitting her to the extent that she went upstairs again so people were saying that um she actually probably had a concussion and by the time she came back downstairs she lied down on the floor with a pillow on her head and with a pillow under her head rather and she just kept crying but leonel just thought that she was weeping because of the fact that he had one high in this case and he he didn't listen to her he just kept on watching his wrestling and after a while he tried to tap her to ask her if she wanted water or juice or whatever and she just didn't wake up that was when he had gone upstairs to report to his mom that tiffany was not waking up when she came downstairs which is leonel's mom she tried to give her cpr but she was already pronounced dead on arrival to the hospital so basically Leonel's side in the court case did not win because they kept trying to bring out different things mental health issues the fact that he didn't know he was just a child but the judge didn't listen especially because of the fact that he had histories of violence even in kindergarten and the fact that he just kept changing his story he even said at one point that she died due to a tight hug that he gave her this was even before he had finally confessed to this reenactment video that he did so which means at one side he was saying that it was a hug at one side he was saying it was wrestling so his story just kept changing and so the court even got more angry and just looking at the fact that this boy knew what he was doing because if you know that you did something by mistake you should say it and own up to the mistake but the fact that i kept on changing just made everyone seem or think that he did it purposely and then got scared when he saw that there were consequences to his actions so when leonel was asked why he lied in the first place he said that when the police came he was scared and he did not know what to do he had never seen police come to his house before and he just decided to lie to get himself out of trouble the prosecution was also asking 
Leonel's side and his lawyers why the video did not explain or show the 30 plus injuries that were seen on Tiffany's body. But the judge was also asking why in the video the reenactment of Tiffany begging was not shown because there is no way she would have been hit, taking all those hits as a very young girl who is like three times less your body weight, not beg or cry out for help on the fact that you were hitting her to the extent that she was having bruises and internal bleeding and injuries. After the skibble double in court and the back and forth for days, the prosecution offered Lionel to take a plea deal of the fact that it was a second degree murder, which basically means that he knew that what he was doing could kill Tiffany, but didn't think that the incident would actually result in her being killed. But Leonel's mom did not agree. She kept on lying and dying on the fact that this boy actually killed Tiffany by mistake. So at this point, Leonel's life was left in the jury's hands. And the whole world was watching at this time because it was a very big case. And the youngest boy at this point that was accused and probably committed murder. After the court case he was found guilty of first degree murder and he was actually sentenced to life this took to social media as everybody was shocked and felt like the judge was unfair on the fact that he was actually a teenage boy and he could have been given multiple years yes but a life sentence was too much even the mother and prosecutors on tiffany's mother's side actually even tried to ask and beg the judge that the life sentence might have been too much. Even the lawyers from Lionel's side to himself was trying to tell the judge that this was actually a lot. But the judge said, if you actually feel like this boy should be given a lesser sentence or should not even be punished at all, why did you bring him to court? He hit the hammer on the table and called it a freaking day stood up and left in 2003 which is like two years after this whole thing happened he was asked to plead second degree homicide murder but he was turned down but considering the fact that he had spent three years in jail on good behavior he was given one year on full house arrest community service and 10 years probation he was allowed to walk free on the streets by 2004 but he had like an ankle bracelet that was supposed to like you know keep track of him and make sure that he doesn't go against his probation rules of 10 years well how do you fuck your second chance at life up well i'm going to tell you how Lionel did this he was found with a machete and cutlass outside his house when he knows he's on probation which is also one of the top rules which is against his probation he's not supposed to be seen with any type of murderous weapon or anything that can be used to harm somebody and he was seen with one outside his house and that was how he basically fucked himself up on probation so the judge actually extended his probation to another five years so which means he was on 10 years before so the additional five years is going to make it 15 years and gave him again another chance like he's so lucky that it wasn't the original judge that actually gave him the life sentence that took this probation case up because I am 100% sure that he would have gone straight right back to prison. But he was lucky enough to have gotten someone that only extended his probation time. And okay, fine. He's back on the streets again. A third chance, right? But just a year after this, in May of 2005, Leonel was found guilty of an armed burglary. And the pizza man actually said that Leonel was the one holding the gun so not only have you violated your probation by even participating in an armed burglary you also carried the gun leonel obviously knew that he was basically done for at this point because now he knew that there was no more chances for him at this point so he lied to the judge that anytime he's walking on the street or just on his own or sitting down alone that he hears voices in his head telling him to kill himself so the judge ordered a psych eval which is like a psych 
evaluation for him and he was actually seen to have critical thinking so which means he was in his right mind and he has no body in his head telling him he was just using it as an excuse so that he might have gotten a lesser sentence or what's not and then later on he actually admitted to the fact that he was actually the one with the gun and he pleaded guilty for it so after this the judge actually said and i say in quotes Leonel Tate, you have run out of second chances. Actually, it's not actually second chances. It's actually three chances, but you know, whatever. In 2008, Lionel's defense decided to plead no contest to the participation of the robbery, which is saying that he was not even particip participant in the robbery. And in return, the court added 10 years to his additional or already 20 years, so which means... 30 years in jail so right now Lionel Tate is actually still in prison and he's not happy about it till so till date Lionel Tate says that he did not participate in the pizza robbery and it was someone that looked exactly like him that participated in that robbery